Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode number 18 here in the Systematic Factory. I have been doing some work getting some more preparations ready for our petroleum boiler. I really want to fire it up, but it's not quite ready, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But one thing I've done is I've removed our desalination plant here, and so now the water that's going into our oil system is coming directly down from our water tank up here. So the water that comes, water gets filtered up here, it gets pumped down, and then that way I don't have to have a separate tank. The main reason I did that is because I'm getting low here, so if I'm not paying attention, eventually this is going to run out of salt water, I wouldn't have water, and we'd have problems in the system. So I figured I'd move it. This is still all getting pumped into our main tank, so it'll still get emptied into it, and we'll keep going until it's all gone. I've also still been pumping away at the gases in here. We're down to just a little bit left about 30 grams across on this side and you know smaller as we go towards the, the pump um, i'm not in a hurry to get this out so i'm just letting that one pump do its thing this pump is pumping out the gas from the main base filtering it all out sending it where it needs to go so let's go take a look at our petroleum boiler and see where we're at so the temperature in here got up to 404 which means we shut off this door or technically opened this door so we shut off the heat transfer so this petroleum is at 405 degrees it's um it's right where we want it so that as we add oil into it it will very quickly turn into petroleum so the uh, if we look at our oil let's bring up oil instead of petroleum oops i can spell I promise. We bring up crude oil. 401.9 is when it transitions. It's always two degrees more than this is when it actually does the transition. Um, so as we put oil in here, as this pool heats it up to 400 and above the 401.9 mark, it'll turn into petroleum uh, pretty quickly. And then it will cause petroleum to flow out and down to here. This is this won't pump it out until this gets above 900 kilograms. Might tweak that a little bit and change that around. But this chamber is now at 700 degrees or more. So this thermo sensor is 700 degrees, so it won't allow any more heat to come in from the magma. The problem is I didn't have quite enough magma stockpile. We used up a lot of what we had to get this up to temp. Now we're not going to use a ton of magma going forward, but right now, if I need more heat, there's no more to flow in because if we open this door, the magma isn't doesn't have enough pressure to push it down into here. So this would cool down really quickly. And if we put oil in here, it's going to cool the whole system back down. We'll have to reheat it back up again. So right now we're at a standstill. We have to wait until we get more magma. This has four more in four more cycles. We get another load of magma put out, but we go dormant in nine cycles after that. And that means we have to wait another 50 cycles before we get more magma from here. So what I want to work on right now is I am going to get into here and set up our BioBot Builder. We could get into what I want. The main goal for what we're going to do is I want to get some of this magma and I want to take it up and put it into our um, magma pool up at the top. We could do that with duplicates. When you pump out magma using um, pitcher pumps, the duplicates can carry it with no problem. You have to do a little, a couple of little things to make it work, but you could. But I think that the BioBot builders are going to be able to pump it too. And I think it'll just be fun to get in here and do that. So first things first, we need to get in here and set up a system so that we can get these zombie spores pumped into here. So the way that this works... Let's restore it. The way that this BioBot Builder works, in my understanding, is that we pump in gas that has zombie spores into it, and then the gas gets pumped back out. And the zombie spores and steel are used to create the BioBots, which are basically like zombie steel machines, I guess you would call them. Uh, so what we need in here is we need to get down in here and have a system where we can pump in or go in and have a pump that pumps out the uh, carbon dioxide that's in here with the zombie spores in it, runs it through here, and then pumps it back in so that it can get 
topped off with zombie spores again. We want to do that without causing uh, our duplicates to get exposed to zombie spores. And with them being in Atmos suits, I think they'd be fine, but I want to be extra cautious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break a spot here. Did we ever empty these? Yeah, we did. I'm going to demolish this one because I want to use that space. I'm trying to leave this as intact as possible just to have it look like a little lab. But that is in my way. So what we're going to do is we're going to create like a a liquid lock here just temporary to get down in here so we can dig some things out so we can get a pump put in put a vent put in and then um while it's still sealed up with a liquid lock we'll open up the spaces above these uh, plants so that we can get some of the gas mixing so this oh I didn't think about that. We have sour gas coming in down there, but that's okay. Cause we're going to put the liquid right here. I'll just use a, some blocks to block out the gas to get that gas out. I don't want to have gas mixing. I just want carbon dioxide in here and I may pump in some extra carbon dioxide to keep this system topped off. But so what we're going to do is somebody's going to just demolish this locker. I'm going to put in a pitcher pump so we can drop some liquid down in here just to block off the gas flow. And then we will have a duplicate come in here and dig out some of this space for us so that we can um, start doing some construction. I got to be careful. This is coal. This is coal, coal, coal. And abyssalite. So as long as I don't dig the blocks underneath these, they'll be fine. I just don't want to break any of these sporkids because they're the only five I have and I don't want to risk having a, a, a run out of zombie spores for this setup. Okay, so it's going to take a little while before they get down here and get all this. I'm going to get a space built up. Oh, it looks like they're there now. But I'm going to put in a pitcher pump. I'll get this set up so we can get down in there and then we will come back once we have this set up the way we want it to be. We've reactivated our uh, Biobot building. I'm not going to read through this, but basically it's just showing that there's an organism in the building and that gives us some information about how it works. But so we're going to be pumping in zombie spores to turn that organ to bring that organism to life and then put him inside a steel casing. And he is going to be our little dude to do some work for us. All right, so we got a little bit of crude oil down there. Um, and then that means, let's see, this is emptied. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. I, I dug this in just such a way so that when the oil comes down, it hits here, it comes over, and it goes here. So it gets rid of any gases that were in those three tiles. So the, um, this is all safe. Let me just check the germ overlay. We have zombie spores inside each of those spaces. Let me think about how I want to get around in here. I'm going to build a ladder right down the middle. Because that'll still be safe. I just want to make sure that before I open anything up in here that this lock is going to stay there. Oh, I built it out of obsidian. I don't want that. It doesn't matter. Obsidian's close by, so it'll be fine. And we're gonna we're not gonna leave it there in the long run. Anyway, so that's fine. Uh actually no, we probably will leave the ladder there, so let's change that up. Make it out of granite. So what I'm thinking is we'll put a pump over here in this corner because of the layout. That'll mean we can just pump it directly in here. And then we'll put a vent probably right in this tile to vent the gases back in. And so that will be fine. And since we have a liquid lock here, the zombie spores aren't going to make it out. And then when we're done and everything's open, we can just put a tile back here. We'll leave that crude oil in that spot so that it will be okay. Actually, no, I don't think that's gonna work because then the get, uh, I don't know that the zombie spores, I guess we can open up down across the bottom. Yeah, I think that'll be okay.
I'll have to give it some thought while we do it. But we're going to put a vent right here. And then we'll have an insulated pipe that comes up to here. This one can go. We'll put a gas pump in on this side. And we'll put gas coming out back in here. So then we need power. Let's see, the easiest way to get to power is probably going to be come up and across. And I believe that power should be pl plenty. Yeah, there's plenty of space on that line. Okay, so that's good there. Let's see what happens. If I if I remove this, it's still we're still gonna leave some oil on here, which will be fine. Which means the zombie spores are now in this space next to it, but it can't get through the crude oil. And so we're safe there. And so my goal is to leave that tile right there so that when if we ever need to come back in, we just break this tile and they can come back down in and that'll stay in place. But that means that these tiles can all go. So can this. All of these. This and this. This one's fine and this one's fine. We'll get rid of these two tiles, this tile. And all the tiles up on this side. May need to put some ladders in to get around to do those things. We'll see. And we'll just keep an eye on our germs. So our germs are filling up in this whole room. And that's fine. I want to do a temporary gas line. It comes up from here. If I go like that, is it going to make me get rid of that flower? I don't think so. I think these are only one tall. Let's do mopping up of this oil that spilled to the bottom. Beth, why are you just chilling there? Okay, you can't get to that side, so I do need to put a ladder. Let's put one there. Actually, just the bottom one will be fine. That'll let her get down and mop everything out. And then on this side, we need to connect this to there. And then we'll reconnect the power. And so what this is going to do is I'm going to fill the room up with a dense amount of carbon dioxide. Since there's not much in here. And it's very conveniently located. Oh, I still need to shift this over. I moved I moved this over so that I could move this over so I could get this block out of there. Let's work on that too. So we're gonna decon here and here first. This room I built, when I built it, I did I had changed it so this air vent is inside the wall of this room, and I don't like that. So I'm basically just gonna break these tiles, shift the liquid lock over one, and then move all of this over one more space so I can close this wall off and get rid of these two tiles. That's the plan anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna let this all construction get finished and we'll come back once we're ready to start using our Biobot Builder. Gotten some progress done here. I did shift this uh, carbon dioxide storage tank over one. So basically, just like I said, I moved everything over by one. The, the gas pumps are still in the same place, but that's fine. The That way we could make this wall nice and flat. I also lowered this down by one so that we could put a space underneath here to get underneath, just so I could get around to get some airflow going for all of these. And so now we have the sporkids are dumping out uh, zombie spores into this room. So this room has lots and lots of zombie spores. We pumped in some carbon dioxide, so this has a pretty solid amount of carbon dioxide in here. 
And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to connect this pump. Here, and that means we'll start pumping in carbon dioxide that has zombie spores in it. So this thing was saying it needed zombie spores. So now it says incubating spores, sporb at 50%. It's up to 51 and then the gas automatically vents back out into this room. So if we look, we have carbon dioxide coming in we have carbon dioxide coming out. It doesn't show us on there how much um, zombie spores are in it, but it's using what it needs and it's putting it back in here. And so this will just keep providing zombie spores to me for our system. So this, as far as I understand, once it has enough spores, or enough spores for the sporb. The sporb will then be combined with steel, which is already in here, and it will make us a little biobot. the end of my last clip, I had a little bit of an allergy issue and quickly muted the mic, and then I forgot to turn it back on. So I did a whole section down here without my mic on. <laughs> so well, I'm just gonna show you what I did. It's nothing, it wasn't too, anything too fantastic. I just built a section down here where I am building a, uh, gas lock here so that we can um, vacuum out just this corner here for two reasons. One, I, I, I am vacuuming out this whole room, but it's going to take a long time to finish doing that, especially because I just accidentally poured some petroleum down before I had the insulated tiles in place and it hit this spot and added more sour gas to the room. But also, um, now that our biobots are up and running, and I'll show you them in a second, the this room is going to be biobot only. So I'll set this door so nobody's allowed in. And then the biobots are going to be the ones that do the work in here. And right now, this biobot is delivering... Um, I think he is the one that is delivering the petroleum to my bottle emptier down here. So we're still learning how they work, but basically once the biobot builder had enough spores, it, our doctor came down and put the sporb inside of a little casing made out of steel, and then they go around, they have a, a, a lifetime, a battery for biofuel, and then once, they're, once they run out, they just lay where they are, and duplicates have to grab them and turn them back into steel. Pretty simple. All right, he, so he's delivering petroleum... That's creating a lock here. Let's increase the priority on this. Um, it's pretty interesting. The biobots uh, are, I, I don't think you can control them through doors so they can go where they want. The one issue that I did have, and let me come up here to it, is that my biobots keep coming up here to grab the pinch row eggs because I have it set so that our duplicates can't go through here to get to these pinch row eggs to, to create a loop to go here, but our biobot sure can because they can go right through this door. Um, I'm not sure how to prevent that yet. Still working on it. There might be something that allows it to do it. If anybody knows any tricks that I'm not aware of, feel free to leave me a comment so I can figure it out. But for now, I just lower the priority so that the biobots have more important things to do instead of creating loops for us. Okay, so this room will be sealed once this tile is in place, which means all this gas can get pumped out. I'm getting rid of this old uh, insulated pipeline here, and we're sweeping out the rest of the room. Once we get all the gas out of here, we're going to crack in here and set up some pumps to grab magma and take it up to our tank. Our magma tank up here... Uh, is now have we have some magma stored up the problem is is that this is going dormant in four cycles so this is the all the magma i have for now once i start putting crude oil in here i i don't want to deal with the it running out so we're going to set up uh some pumps or some pitcher pumps and bottle emptiers to bring up some more magma from the magma biome because i'd like to get rid of some of it anyway so i can do some stuff down there um so it'll all work out. We're good. So what we need to do is finish getting this room done so that we can set up the bottle emptier in a vacuum environment so we don't have heat from the, the magma passing into the gases. 
we'll set to do the pitcher pumps there's a little bit of a trick to it and i'll show you that as we go and then we'll be able to pump it up using the, we're going to use our biobots to do it our duplicates could do it just fine too because once they're in the bottles the heat doesn't transfer to them but we're going to do it with the biobots and then we'll have uh some bottle emptiers up there in the magma chamber for our volcano to pump it out and my goal is to get all of this magma here to start cleaned up and taken out of here up there so still a lot of work to do we've got to wait on these gases to get pumped out before we can really start building down here we've gotten our little section down here vacuumed out so that there is no uh gas inside which means we can start doing some work down in here the only people allowed inside this room are jerry because he is a super hard digger which i need to dig out the items and my bio bots so it's going to be a little slow and that's kind of how i want it i want to see how this all works with the bio bots but the goal here is i'm going to put this obsidian ladder down into this magma pit because the obsidian will be fine in it and then i'm going to dig out a section here to put in a pitcher pump i'm taking these ladders out so that i can put it up here comes one of my little biobots right now so they can do errands that are like deconstruct and build and stuff like that they can carry they can store but what they can't do is skill required errands so this dig requires somebody with a super hard digging skill so the biobots can't do it that's why i have to have jerry coming in here so i have it available for him to do that so once he comes in and digs out my space here we'll be able to proceed. But what we need to do with the pitcher pump, if we were to put a pitcher pump right here, the heat from the magma would transfer directly into the pitcher pump, it would overheat, and we would not be able to continue for very long. If I put it up here, it'll extend four blocks below it, and I dig out this space below it. Since the magma is not directly touching the base of the pitcher pump, only the uh, root of the pitcher pump, see this, like this here, the straw, as it were, that goes down, will reach down into the magma at the bottom, and I'll be able to pump magma up into this pitcher pump without damaging it. So let's dig out this, 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 and this as well. And then once that's done, this pitcher pump will be active. We'll be able to pump out magma from this pool through this pitcher pump. If we go up to our tank up here, I've put down a bottle emptier for now. I just put down one. I just want to try it out. I think that what's going to happen is because of the uh, heat of the magma, it's going to cool as soon as it comes out, and it's going to form a block at the base of this. Um, I'm not sure. So I may have to do some work with figuring out how to make that work. But I think we'll be able to get it to do its thing. Uh, we'll have to just experiment with it. But first thing is we, first is finishing this up so that we can actually dig into it. I'm also digging out some of these blocks. I need to be careful now that I'm digging into this area. <clears throat> these items here are all cool. But once I dig any lower... I'm digging into 1300 degree abyssalite and I don't want to accidentally store that in a bad place. So the big thing I want to change is right now I have abyssalite storage in here. And that is under, let's just search for it. Abyssalite is here. I'm going to turn that off. The other item that I'm going to be digging down here that's going to be hot is obsidian. So I have them both getting dropped off here and put in. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put storage down here in the form of storage bins. Uh, let's do them. Rock will be fine. We'll put four of them there and then we'll set up storage for abyssalite and obsidian here. And then that way I can sweep these out. We'll put, that'll put these out, out here so they're outside so that other duplicates can come and grab them. 
since we will they won't be able to get in here and then i can keep this area clean so i don't have things getting superheated from all the work i'm doing down here and once uh jerry is done doing his digging i will block him off so he can't come in here and then the only people in here will be our little biobots and then that way we can experiment with them like i said our duplicates would be fine down here as long as we're careful but you know the point of the biobots is to be able to keep them from harm's way by sending them in here and i want to do some experimentation with it so all jerry has to do is dig out these last four and then we will start work on everything else. So we have gotten everything set up here. Uh, I do not have any issues with the magma coming out of the bottle emptiers because there's a vacuum here. I forgot that as long as there's no gas for it to interact with, it won't change temperature. So we don't have any solidifying. So um, I think I could actually put these like right next to each other. It would have been fine, but this is plenty. Overkill, really. I have all these here as emptiers and then down here in the um, vacuum area that we have down here I have three pitcher pumps so now I have more biobots I have several of them running around now they keep getting made <clears throat> and they are coming down and they're picking up magma and they're taking it up uh, I also still Jerry's still out in here because I'm still digging some blocks out I'm going to get this area pumped out as much magma as I can, and then we'll extend it down and we'll move the pitcher pumps down lower until we can get all of this pumped out. And then that will allow us to have magma to use while we're waiting for the volcano to provide us with more. Now we have a good bit piled up here. We're going to fill this whole tank up, but we are able to turn on our petroleum boiler now because we'll have enough flow of magma coming in to keep our heat going but we've been going for a while i think i'm over 30 minutes already um so we're going to call it a day for today and then the next episode we're going to spend the entire time activating our petroleum boiler doing some testing and getting our power set up while we were doing all this stuff i did set up some piping so we have piping that goes down to our power plant so that we have the petroleum will flow right into there as soon as we start getting it made and we have pumped up enough oil that we're fully stocked here so hopefully once we get this running we'll be able to get some good petroleum flow going and get some real power going in the next episode hope you enjoyed watching it we'll see you in the next one Bye bye